How's it going, Grant here? Welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be unboxing and setting up the DFG GT2 smartwatch. So this is an inexpensive smartwatch that's meant to really give you the basic smartwatch features like pushing your notifications from your phone to your watch. So you'll get your notifications, but you probably won't be able to actually reply to them or take action. So like no replies, no likes on Twitter, all that stuff because there's no app integration. And you probably can't answer your phone calls because there's no speakerphone on this. But you'll get notified of all your basic notifications from your phone. But it's really meant to track your fitness. So it can do things like step tracking, sleep tracking, heart rate monitoring, blood oxygen level, a whole bunch of things at a pretty low price point. This is retailing for about $50 right now on Amazon. And there's usually a coupon there to check the box when you check out to bring down the price a little bit more. So let's go ahead and set this up and see what it can really do. As you can see here, it's actually geared towards working on both iOS and Android. I'm gonna set this up on my iPhone 12 mini here. So it actually works with this WolfFit app. So let's go ahead and launch that. And you can see here, there's a registered or offline version. We want the online version so that you can actually access all the features we'll put in our region. So it looks like you need to create an account. I'll just log in with my Apple account. So now we'll just go ahead and search for the device. GT2 is right there. Now it's asking to pair and we want to allow notifications. And so it looks like we're in the setup process now. So we'll go ahead and walk through the setup in the app. So we'll fill out some basic information here. And now it's asking which notifications you want to get. So it looks like it's going to be limited to a subset of your apps. And so I've had other watches like this and it's the same way. It'll only work with specific apps and it's really your main ones that's going to give you calling, messaging, and some of your social media. So it won't be compatible with all apps to send notifications over to your watch. So keep that in mind. Now here's where some of the fitness features come in. So you see automatic heart rate detection, blood pressure detection and blood oxygen monitoring. We'll check all that. Okay, so here we are in the main app. As you can see, it's gonna give you all your basic summary info up top and all your detailed info of what it's tracking on the bottom. So you can see everything here, step, sleep, heart rate. And if you click on that, it'll give you the detailed breakdown of all those different things that it's tracking for you. So you can see sleep here, your heart rate monitoring, blood pressure, blood oxygen, all that stuff, ECG even. So it's got actually a lot of features in it for a pretty low cost, which is impressive. I'll be testing it out over at least another week to see how well it works compared to my Apple Watch to check it for accuracy. So I'll come back with a video in probably after a week to show you all that, but let's go ahead and get through the settings on this. So let's go to settings. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have all your settings properly set up here. So obviously goal setting is optional. You can do that. It'll track you to all your goals like most smartwatches will do. But for unit settings, since I'm in the US, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we go to Imperial, not metric. And connect via third party platform. This is where, for example, if you're using an iOS device, you can connect it to the health app and actually transfer the data that it's collecting back into the health app so that you have all your health data aggregated. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna track my Apple Watch separately from this device, but that is an option. Next, we can set up the actual device settings. We'll click on GT2 and message reminders, really your notifications. So you can see all the apps that are compatible with this and can set or deactivate notifications that are coming from your phone on only these apps here. And heart rate scope is where you can set a notification for if your heart rate's elevated too high and you can set what that level should be. So you can turn it on and actually set the limit that you want to get the notification on if your heart rate starts going too high. And then send the area reminders, I believe this is, it'll notify you to keep motivated. So just like how your Apple Watch says, hey, you're not moving around, you need to stand up or you don't have as many steps as you normally do. I think this is where you can actually turn that on. So this is where you can actually set which time of day you want these notifications to come in and reminders to come in. Maybe you're more active in the afternoon and you don't want this always going off in the mornings. So you can set it to that time interval or maybe you just don't want it coming in while you're sleeping. You can do that here. And so display will light up by rotating your wrist. This is your basically your raise to wake. You can turn it on or off. And if it's on, you can set the time of day where you want this working. And so you can also set the sensitivity. So if it's not always working when you're raising your wrist, you can increase it. Or if it's doing it too frequently on every movement, you can actually turn that down a bit. And this is where you can actually set an alarm to go off on your watch here or set any kind of a specific event reminders. All that can be done here in the settings. And so rotate wrist to take a photo. That's being able to take a photo with your watch. So you'll have to set up your phone somewhere and then you won't actually see what you're taking a photo of on the on your watch, but you can go ahead and click the side button here and it'll actually take a photo on your phone. And there's a few other miscellaneous settings, but it looks like you can update your firmware here. So if they give you updates to the software on the watch, this is where you would update it in the settings app. All right, so now that we set it up, let's go ahead and do a quick walkthrough of the watch itself. So there's your standard watch face, but you can swipe up and down to get through different watch faces. So here's the different available watch faces there. And if you swipe to the right, you can see your steps. And one more time, you can see your sleep. And this will rotate around, so you can power your phone off. And this is where you can control all the different things you can track. So your different activity modes, ECG, heart rate, blood pressure, access your stopwatch, timer, blood oxygen, 
You can control music, you can find your phone, so you tap that, it'll ping your phone. And here's where you can access the actual settings on the watch wrist yourself. Basic information, brightness, auto lock, switch is where you can turn on and off the different things you want to use like your alarm, your activity reminders to get moving, turning on and off, race to wake, all the different things you can choose and control from your settings right from your wrist. And here's what the watch looks like. You can see on the back, there is all your sensors, the buttons on the side. This silver one doesn't do anything. It's just there for aesthetic. It doesn't even press in. And this is your select button to wake and make selections on the watch. This does rotate, but it doesn't control anything. It's just kind of there for look and feel. And lastly, you can see the wrist straps here. So like you saw in the unboxing, these are easy, quick access on and off. So you just push that in to pull it off. And so therefore these can be swapped out. So I think this is a 22 millimeter band. I'll have to go ahead and double check that, but they can be swapped out if you can find other bands that are this size and have this quick release mechanism. So there you go. That is the DFG GT2 smartwatch unboxing and quick setup. Like I said, I'm going to use this for at least a week to get a feel for it, to double check accuracy against my Apple watch. And I'll come back with another video to see and let you know how it's been working. So until then, drop any questions or comments in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.